Alright, this next one's going to be a quick review because we did most of this whenever we talked about triangle congruence theorems. Now we're just talking about similarity theorems. That little thing I just did with my hand, it looked real creepy. This is congruent. Here's the signs. The equals, that's equal. That's congruent. The similar is similar. Notice I put that on top. Whatever. Alright, we're doing 7-3, triangle similarity. AA, SS, and SAS, okay? Now, whenever we talk about triangle congruence, okay, we're talking about two triangles being the exact same measure. There was side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and HL. Five things, okay? Pretty much everything you can think of except for AAA and the cuss word and the cuss word backwards, okay? You know what I'm talking about. All right, now, for this section we're doing AA, now this is triangle congruence, this is triangle similarity, okay? We're doing AA, SSS, and SAS. I forgot for a second, you forgot for a second, okay? Now, that means that we need to know all this junk to make them congruent, okay? We need all this junk to make them similar, okay? Similar means that they're just smaller versions of each other, all right? One way to do it is... Angle-angle theorem, okay? The angle-angle similarity theorem means if you have two triangles and you know that this angle is congruent to another angle here, we have one angle that's congruent. So that's, I don't want to put that. I'll put the A. Angle, and then we know these angles are congruent. That means that these two triangles are similar. Because what do we know that third angle has to be? Congruent, obviously. Because if you cut the same amount out of 180 from these two, you're left with the same amount. Okay, so all we need is two angles that are congruent Boom, we know that these triangles are similar, okay? Now, side, side, side. Obviously, in the other one, we had to know that the sides were congruent. We don't want congruent triangles. We want similar triangles. So we don't have to know that they are all congruent with the SSS theorem. What we need to know is that they're all similar by the same amount. The similarity ratio is the exact same. Say I have two triangles here. Let's say this one is um, 2, that one's 4, that one's 3, that's 6, and that's Okay, we got to match these up. Now, here's the problem some people have. They're like, I don't know which lines match up with what. All right, here's the best way to do it, and I'm a math teacher, and I have short hair, so I know. Okay, and I'm also wearing glasses. That's the trifecta of math teachers. Okay, take the smallest line in both triangles. They have to match up because they're both the smallest. Two is the smallest here, and four is the smallest here. So we put two over four. What does that reduce to? One half. Good job. Now, take the biggest. Four is the biggest here. Eight is the biggest here. Four over eight reduces to one half. So far, so good. Okay? And then three is the only thing left, and six. One half. Now, right, don't tell anybody I told you that little cheating way because you'll get in so much trouble by getting so many answers correct. All right, so we've got one half, one half, one half. Our similarity ratio is one half. Okay? So, if you can match up and show that all three sides are similar by the same ratio, that proves it was side, side, side. Now, if you could probably have deduced by this point, um, side, angle, side, that means that you can know that you need to know a side, two sides are similar, and the angle, the included angle in between them is congruent. So let's say that's congruent to that. Uh, this is 10, this is 30, this is 6, and this is 18, okay? So, let's see. 6 and 18, they're both the smaller ones. So, 6 over 18 is 1 third. 10 over 30 reduces to 1 third. Our similarity ratio is 1 third. 1 third, we got an included angle that is the exact same measure. Those suckers right there are similar, which means they are smaller or bigger versions of each other, okay? Oh, I did not rip my teacher's edition. Do not tell my mom. All right. Last thing I want to review real quick just to show you because you probably forgot uh, our three properties you might use. There's the reflexive property, which means something is congruent to itself, okay? Uh, like triangle. And then we're working this with similarity. If uh, triangle, let's see what I put. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle ABC. Okay, that's the reflexive property. Because you look in the mirror, you see yourself. So it's the exact same. Reflexive property of symmetry. That's the symmetry sign. Don't forget that. Okay? Now let's do the symmetric property. 
Um, a, B, C is similar to D, E, F. You know what that means? That triangle D, E, F is similar to triangle A, B, C. Okay? So that's the, uh, what did I say? Symmetric. Symmetric property of similarities. And the last one is the transitive. We all know transitive. I don't want to write all this, but I guess I will. Triangle ABC is similar to DEF. And guess what? Triangle DEF is similar to triangle XYZ. So guess what? You can cut out the middleman and just say the triangle ABC is similar to triangle XYZ. Gosh, that was too much talking. That's called the transitive property of similarity. Okay? And